hemostasis is a process to stop bleeding and comes from the Greek word blood and halting or stagnation. Now the process of hemostasis can essentially be divided into three major parts. Vascular spasm or vasoconstriction, platelet plug formation, and finally coagulation. Now these three steps are important to know. Coagulation cascade process actually is much more complex and involves various chemicals called clotting factors which we will look into more closely later on. So let's just look at an example of hemostasis. So let's just say a bull um, has hit you, or a cow or whatnot, unfortunately, and we will zoom into the section where the, where the injury has occurred. So here we have the blood vessel with a tear in it from the injury with damaged cells which then exposes collagen. Now this is their layers under the skin consisting of many tissues and many types of cells and around the blood vessels are the smooth muscle cells. So let's go over what we find in these uh, blood vessels which assist in hemostasis. Firstly, there are the red blood cells called erythrocytes and together with other proteins and whatnot is what escapes the vessels when there is an injury. Other things found inside the blood vessels during injury, which we will look into later on, are clotting factors, platelets, also known as thrombocytes, von Willebrand factors, prothrombin, and there is fibrinogen. Now all these might sound foreign to you, but step by step I will introduce them. And they're found all inside the blood vessels, all these substances. So what firstly happens in hemostasis, as mentioned before, is vasoconstriction or vasospasm. Now the blood vessels have to contract in order to save blood from gushing out and being wasted. But how do the blood vessels know when to contract? Well, there are three main ways. First, cells around the injured area, especially the endothelial cells, begin secreting chemicals, which tell the smooth muscles to contract, enhancing vasoconstriction. And you're also, second, your own body's nerve reflexes, reflexes tell the injured vessels to contract. And finally, there's also myogenic spasm, which is muscle spasm, when during an injury, the muscles just contract naturally. Now, all three help with vasoconstriction. But you might have heard me say vasodilation in my immunology videos when an injury occurs. But vasodilation tends to happen in not to non-injured vessels and occurs to sites where immune cells need to go, so they get there faster. Vasoconstriction happens around the area where blood vessels are actually damaged. So anyway, we're going back. By going back, here again we have the blood vessels containing, if you remember, the erythrocytes, von Willebrand factor, platelets, also known as thrombocytes, and also there are clotting factors, prothrombin, and fibrinogen, which I will discuss later on. Right now, we will look into the first three. Look at the first three. So first, when we talked about vasospasm, when the smooth muscles around the cell, uh, endothelial cells contract. Next, what happens to stop the bleeding temporarily uh, is platelets form a plug around the injured area, known as platelet plug formation. Now, this process can be divided into four parts. The first step is platelet adhesion, where von Willebrand factors assist the platelets, the thrombocytes, to begin attaching to the injured tissue. The platelets can attach to the exposed collagen quite easily. The erythrocytes are also trapped in here. So you can say that the von Willebrand factor helps bind collagen and platelets. Anyway, after platelet adhesion, platelet release reaction takes place, where the platelets get more sticky and begin releasing chemicals, which tell more platelets to come and join the party and also enhance vasospasm and slow down blood. These chemicals released are adenosine diphosphate, which tell more platelets to come, and there is also serotonin and thromboxane A2, which enhances vasospasm and enhances platelet aggregation, which is our third step in platelet plug formation. Platelet aggregation basically seals the damaged area, where basically the, all these platelets come and basically stick around the area. More platelets. They're aggregated. And this will eventually lead to the platelet plug formation, our final step. Now, but you might ask yourself, now what if these platelets keep building up on top of one another and build on other cells around the area, ones that are not injured. When does it stop? Well, the platelets only form a plug and are in damaged cells. Platelets do not form plugs somewhere else because the healthy cells around the area release chemicals such as nitric oxide and other prostaglandins which prevent these platelets to aggregate in that area. Okay, 
So the playlet plug formation step enables platelets to the thrombocytes to form plugs to stop bleeding, but other processes are needed to re strengthen and reinforce the plug so that it doesn't break apart again later on. So that's where clotting comes in, or coagulation, which is our third step in hemostasis. So going back again from the beginning, we had, first of all, vasospasm. And we talked about the von Willebrand factor and the thrombocytes, the platelet, which form the platelet plug formation on exposed collagen. Blood and erythrocytes slowly get trapped in that matrix and escape out ever more slowly. The platelet plug formation is complete. And our next step is clotting or coagulation. Now the coagulation process are composed of the clotting factors, prothrombin, and fibrinogen, which we will look into now. So what clotting essentially does is that it strengthens the platelet, platelet plug with fibrin. With this results in a fibrin mesh, a sort of mesh. Now you can think of this process as the liquid around the platelet plug. Firstly, turning into gel after coagulation, which then seals the damaged vessel nicely. Now to form this gel, which is this fibrin mesh, requires a number of complex processes involving many clotting factors and procoagulants. But for now we will just look at the overview. And so this complex clotting process can be divided into three main steps in coagulation. Now firstly, because the vessels are injured and platelets have aggregated, a series of reactions involving many clotting factors occur. Now there are two pathways involving these clotting factors, the intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. Both, however, result in the same substance, prothrombinase, or also known as prothrombin activator. Now the second step, which is common to both these pathways, intrinsic and extrinsic, is where the substance, prothrombin activator or prothrombinase, together with calcium ions, actually catalyzes prothrombin, this green stuff, into thrombin. So here we have prothrombin, catalyzed into thrombin, which I'll denote with just a green dot. And the third and final step is that the thrombin, which was just catalyzed by the prothrombin, together with again some calcium ions, acts as an enzyme and converts fibrinogen, this orange stuff in the vessels, into fibrin fibers. So here again we have fibrinogen, which then gets converted into fibrin, which I'll denote just as the orange dot. Now these fibrin fibers then stick to the platelets, erythrocytes, and everything else in that injury site to form a meshwork which will eventually form a stable clot and heal. So as you can see, with the help of vasoconstriction, which slows down the blood, the platelets which form a temporary plug and the clotting factors which result, uh, and the fibrinogen which results in a fibrin mesh, the blood vessels can be restored to normal eventually. And when the blood vessels are restored to normal, blood can be supplied once again to the surrounding tissues, healing everything and killing all unnecessary uh, pathogens or cells, which will then get replaced by healthy cells. So next, our um, next part to this video, you can click on the link, is you, will, you can look at some diseases that take place which, with what we have learned here. Um, I hope you liked that. I hope it was understandable. Please comment, like, and subscribe, perhaps? Thank you.